Welcome to this Wiseal Power BI tutorial. In this video, we'll explain how to get data from Excel into your Power BI reports. We'll start by looking at importing from a single worksheet, and we'll talk about using range names and tables, which is important to identify regions in a worksheet. We'll explain how you can import multiple worksheets and build relationships between them. The second half of the video focuses on using the query editor to clean up untidy workbooks. So we'll talk about things like removing rows, promoting headers, how you append multiple worksheets into a single list, and also how you merge worksheets together. So quite a lot to do in this one. Let's get started. OK, to get started, you'll need a copy of the files I've created for this video. And I'll pop a link in the video description below so that you can download this zip file. And when you extract it, you'll find six separate Excel workbooks. And we'll work through these in sequence through the video to show you some basic techniques for importing Excel data into a Power BI desktop report. We're currently on the June 2019 update for Power BI Desktop. So it was only released a couple of days ago, so I'm still getting used to the shiny new bright theme, as opposed to the sort of grim and gloomy dark theme from previously. Uh, but all the standard things are still in the same place, so we shouldn't have too much trouble adapting. If you haven't already installed Power BI Desktop, we do have a quick video tutorial which explains exactly how, part 1.1 of this series. So assuming that you have installed Power BI Desktop and you've opened it up into a brand new blank report, we'll start with the simplest possible way of importing data from Excel using a single Excel worksheet. Before we import the data, let's just have a quick look at what it looks like in Excel. If we head back to our list of extracted files and then double click on file number one, Movies Single Table. If you've watched pretty much any of our video tutorials before, you'll be reasonably familiar with this set of data as our faithful list of 1200 films we've used in various uh, tutorials previously. The lovely thing about this from a Power BI perspective is it's one single flat file effectively. We have a single table in the worksheet surrounded by nothing else at all. The top row contains column headers and we've got a, a header for every single column, no missing data there. Uh, the columns contain the same data in every row. So the ID column contains just numbers, title, text, release date, dates, etc. So it's the simplest possible set of data for Power BI to work with. Let's just close that down then and head back to our report. And let's choose to get data from Excel. So if we head to the get data button, we could click the top half to get a list of all the connectors, but as we know we're going for Excel and Excel is a popular choice, we can just click the drop down list at the bottom of the button and then choose Excel. From there, we need to browse to the file so we can just double click the uh, movies single table. I've extracted mine to a specific folder that I'm gonna use for the duration of the, uh, the, the video. So whatever you've extracted your files to, find it, double click it, to load the navigation tool for selecting bits of an Excel file. Currently in the workbook, all we have is a single worksheet called Movie Sheet, and that's essentially the only thing we can select to import at this stage. If you wanted to see what data it returns, you can highlight the item in the list by clicking on it and checking out the little preview. And if you wanted to select it for importing, you can tick the box and then simply click the load button at the bottom of the window. So I'll do that now and we should see that fairly shortly, with a little bit of progress, fairly shortly, our movie sheet gets imported as a new table into our Power BI data model. And eventually we'll see the movie sheet name appears on the right hand side here and a list of all the columns appears there as well. If you wanted to see the data you've imported, you could head onto the data view using the button on the left hand side of the screen. And this is essentially a simplified version of the Excel workbook. It doesn't work in quite the same way, so I can't, for example, click on a cell and type something in or make any changes to the data. But I can at least see how the data is being treated. So I can see that the release date has been formatted as a date. Slightly differently to the way it's shown in Excel, we have a long date format here as opposed to the short date format I've used in Excel. Likewise, we've lost the formatting for budget dollars and box office dollars. But we can easily reapply formatting at this stage, either in the data view that we're in right now, or also in the model view. As we're already in the data view, let's select the release date column, and then we can go to the modeling tab in the ribbon, and then we can find the format option. And if we wanted to revert to a short date format, we can click on the drop down list here and choose date time. And then let's go with the bog standard short date format. So we'll go for DDMMYYYY. 
And then having done that, we could highlight the budget dollars or box office dollars column and then apply the currency formatting to that. We'll use English United States. It's meant to be in dollars, of course. Uh, so let's do the same thing for box office dollars. We can also view our data in the model view, which isn't particularly useful when there's only a single table in the model. This is much more useful when we have multiple tables and we want to create relationships between them, as we'll see shortly in this video. So for now, we can just return to the report view and be happy that all of our data is imported and formatted the way we want. Now, it's worth mentioning that sheet names aren't the only sorts of things you'll see when you import data from Excel you might also see range names or table names. And let's just quickly demonstrate how that works. If I switch back to my list of extracted Excel files and then double click on movies single table to open that one back up again, we'll start by showing you how to create a range name. Uh, you may already be familiar with this from Excel in general. For example, I could create a range name called budget and a range name called box office. And then I can create formulae in cells by saying equals box office minus budget, for example. So the labels, the, the range names are really just labels that replace cell references. It makes it quite convenient for creating uh, lots of calculations and making things readable. But it also allows us to choose a range to import in Power BI. A quick, simple way to create a range name for my entire table. I have cell A1 selected. If I press Ctrl and A on the keyboard, that selects everything up to the next completely blank row and completely blank column. Then I can click into the name box at the top left hand corner of the screen and I can type in a range name. I'll call this one movie range. You can't use spaces when you name a range, so make sure you don't use spaces. If you would like to, you can use an underscore to represent a space. And then you can press enter on the keyboard to create your new range. Now, one nice thing about range names is that they, they, they act as a navigation tool as well. From anywhere else in this workbook, I can click on my drop down list and select movie range, and it will select the entire block of data for me. If I need to make any modifications to a range name, by the way, the formulas tab in the ribbon and the name manager tool will allow me to either delete the range name I've created or edit it if I needed to update the range of cells to which it refers or create a brand new one from scratch as well if I needed to. So that's a basic range name. What I'd also like to do is create a table which will give us another option for importing data in Power BI. So with a single cell in the range of data selected, I can either head to the insert tab and then choose table or I can just press Ctrl and T on the keyboard. Ctrl and T selects the range of cells that the, cell, the selected cell belongs to. So it does the same thing as pressing Ctrl and A effectively. And it also recognizes in this case that the table does indeed have headers. So we should leave that box checked as well. If we click OK, that creates a formal table and it applies some basic formatting, enables the auto filter tool and gives us the table tools tab as well gives us quick ways to format the table. We should also give this table a sensible name. So in the design tab of table tools, we've got a table name box here. If we click where it says table one, we can then rename this to say movie table and then press enter. Again, don't use spaces in your table names. Okay, so having done that, let's just save the workbook and then we can close that down. And then heading back to Power BI Desktop, we can choose to get more data from our Excel workbook. If we head to the Home tab, we could choose to get data again using the Get Data button. If we've already used the file recently, we can use the Recent Sources button and just select Movies Single Table from the list. That will just take us directly into the Navigator tool rather than having to browse for the file again. And you can hopefully see a couple of extra items now in our list, as well as the Movie Sheet. We've got a Movie Range and a Movie Table, and all three types have a different icon. Now, for this particular example, it didn't really matter about creating a range or a table name. There was absolutely no point. Uh, importing all of these items gives us the exact same set of data. I shouldn't import movie sheet again, as I already have a, an item called movie sheet. But you can see if I click through the various items, it just shows you exactly the same preview. There really is no difference whatsoever. There are occasions when having a table or a range name is helpful, and you'll see examples of that a little later on in the video. For now, just to demonstrate that this does do exactly the same thing, I'll import the movie table and the movie range as well by clicking the load button. And then we'll hopefully be able to see we get some new items appearing on the right hand side of the screen in the fields list shortly. 
and then we can also see our new tables in the data view so if i go to the data view i've got the ability to select movie range it's the same as the uh, the import from the movie sheet was originally so the original date format and budget and box office dollars formats movie table does exactly the same thing if i select a movie table the egg, the same data is there uh, there's really no difference at this point if I head to the model tab, I can see all three separate sheets or three separate tables appearing. Uh, so you can see again that the same column names have been imported. So at this point, I'm just going to switch back to the report view. Importing data from a single worksheet with this nice flat file layout is pretty straightforward then. But what if your data has a slightly more complex arrangement? Let's have a look at file number two. If I head back to the list of extracted files and look for movies related sheets, I'll double click to open that one up. And you might be familiar with this workbook from the video on creating and publishing your first report. We use this as a sort of simulated version of a relational database in Excel. Uh, if that doesn't really make sense, then let me try to explain. Uh, in the main film worksheet, we have the same sort of data we had in our single worksheet in file number one, except that in place of things like director name and country name and genre name, etc., we've just got an ID number. So it tells us that the film Jurassic Park was directed by number four. The way this works is that if I take the ID number four from the director ID column and then head to the director table and look in the same named column in their director ID, I can match that within number four to discover that the director of Jurassic Park was Steven Spielberg, born on 18th of December 1946. The idea behind structuring data this way is to essentially save space, uh, storage space particularly. If I look at the film table again and scroll downwards, I'll find that the director ID number four appears not just once, but many times. Steven Spielberg's a fairly prolific director, so War of the Worlds has got director ID number four, and so on and so on and so on. So you'll see the same ID number appears many times in each column. Now this, I admit, is a slightly unusual relationship. You wouldn't tend to see this in Excel, but you'll certainly see it in a huge variety of relational database type uh, applications. So Microsoft Access, uh, SQL Server, of course. If you work with Power Pivot in Excel, you may be familiar already with building relational data models in Excel. So really what we want to talk about is how we get this data imported into a Power BI report, and making sure that all the relationships work in the way they should. So let's close down file number two and then head back to the uh, the Power BI desktop report. I'm going to start by heading to the model tab just because it's the easiest way to select all three tables. I can do this either from the uh, from the model view or from the fields list by selecting and then holding down either the shift key or the control key. And then I'm going to right click and choose to delete all three tables from the model. I'll confirm that I want to do that. Uh, I'll wait for it to confirm that it's made the changes. And then it doesn't really matter which view we happen to be in, but eventually I want to end up in the model view to see how the tables have been related. So let's stick here before we import the, uh, the new tables. Okay, so let's head up to the get data button and choose Excel and then we can point to file number two, Movies Related Sheets. When the Navigator dialog box appears, we just need to select all five worksheets. Uh, we don't have any range names or table names in this model, so, or sorry, in this workbook, so we can just select all five worksheets. Could really do with a select all button here, couldn't it? Maybe something coming for a future version. Uh, anyway, so all of our five worksheets are selected. We can then click the load button to begin importing them. Now, although, Excel doesn't contain any information about how tables are related. I know I described to you the idea behind relational data. Um, Excel doesn't know anything about that at all. It just has some columns with numbers in that happen to have matching values. But Power BI is a little cleverer than that. Power BI looks for columns in different tables which have the same name and the same data type. And it assumes that if you have those, it wants to create a relationship for you. So you can see hopefully all the lines between the different tables. If you hover the mouse over each line, it shows you which columns are involved in that relationship. You also see little symbols at either side of the line. So for example, at the um, director table end of a relationship here, you can see I get the number one. That indicates that each director is, uh, is stored once and once only in the director table. At the other end of the line is an asterisk, which represents the, uh, the many end of a one-to-many relationship. 
So each director appears once in the director table, but can appear many times in the film table, as demonstrated with our Steven Spielberg example. Now the reason Power BI does this in the first place is because of one of the options in the data load category of your uh, options dialog. Just to show you where that is, if I head to the file menu and choose options and settings and then choose options from the very top, each file has a data load section of properties. If I go to the current file section and click data load, it's the bottom of the first four checkboxes here, which controls the auto detection of new relationships after data is loaded. There is a, another checkbox there that says import relationships from data sources on first load, but that's only important for files which actually contain that sort of information. So for example, Microsoft Access databases or SQL Server databases, etc. Even an Excel workbook which has a data model within it already has one to many relationships, but Excel files themselves don't. So just to demonstrate that that's the case, let's uncheck the auto detect new relationships box and then click OK. Then what I'd like to do is delete all five tables that I've just imported. So from the fields list on the right hand side, I can select the certificate table first, then hold down shift and click on the genre table. And then I can right click on any of the selected ones and choose to delete from model and then choose delete to confirm that I want to do that. When that's happened, I'd like to go back and re-import the same data from Excel. I'll go for recent sources, choose number two, movies related sheets. And back in the same navigator dialog box, we can select those same five worksheets. And then if we click load this time, the same five sheets will be imported as separate tables. But what you'll see this time is that no relationships get created at all. Now, sometimes this can be quite helpful. Sometimes you don't want the tables you're importing to be related and having to go away and manually delete the relationships afterwards is a little annoying. But in this case, I've definitely done the wrong thing. I really do want the tables in this model to be related. Otherwise, the visuals I create won't make any sense. So if I go back to the report view, for example, and I create a simple stacked column chart, let's say I wanted to show the, uh, let's say I wanted to show the total runtime of films by genre. If I add the genre fields to the axis tab and then head to the film table and choose the runtime minutes field, hopefully you can see here that I'm getting absolute nonsense. I'm getting the exact same total runtime for every single genre. And the reason this is happening is because Power BI has no way to tell how those two tables are related. Fortunately, it's a fairly simple thing to change at this point. If I go back to the model view, I can manually click and drag between the two tables. If I drag the genre ID field onto the genre ID field between the two tables, the relationship is detected as a one to many. And if I go back to the report view, I can see now that action films are overwhelmingly the most popular genre in my database by runtime at least. So um, manually creating relationships is no problem. It's just a little bit tedious when you didn't need this to happen in the first place. So I can quickly manually recreate my relationships. But then what I'm going to do is go back and revert my setting to creating relationships automatically for this model. So let's just quickly click and drag to join together all these tables again. And then I'm going to head back to the file menu and I'll choose options and settings, choose options. Then when the dialog box does finally reappear, in the data load page of the current file section, I can click auto detect new relationships after data is loaded and then click OK. Now let's have a look at a workbook that's got a slightly less well organized structure than the previous two. If we switch back to our list of extracted files and then double click on file number three, movies related tables. This workbook contains the same data as the previous one, but in a slightly more haphazard fashion. Everything's stored on one single worksheet called All Data. The, the tables are still, have, are still sort of clearly defined. We have blank rows and columns around each individual table. We still have sensible column headings. It's just that in order for Power BI to detect where the tables are using a single worksheet is virtually impossible. Let's just have a quick look at what Power BI does with this. If I close down the workbook first, then head back to Power BI Desktop, I'll remove the five tables that I've currently got in my model by clicking the first, holding shift and clicking the last, then right clicking and choosing delete from model and then deleting that. And then if we head to the get data button and choose Excel and look for file number three, 
currently in the navigator all we'll be able to do is select our single named worksheet all data and you can hopefully make out here that it's not worthwhile even continuing at this point there is so much of the data spread around in different places with random column names and so on so i'm not, not even going to bother continuing here i'll click cancel first and then look at what we can do to tidy up our movie data let's reopen workbook number three and then when we've done that, the simplest thing we can do here by far is either create range names for each table or convert each individual sort of range of data into an actual formal table. So I'm going to start with a genre table. If I click any cell in the genre table, I can press Control and T and then click OK to create a table with headers. And then I should definitely rename it by selecting the table name at the top here. And I'll call this genre. Then I can do the same for the certificate table. Select a cell, Control T click OK and rename that as a certificate. So this is a little bit tedious to watch, I appreciate, but we'll get through this as quickly as possible. Then the country field, we can press Control T, click OK, rename the table as country, director, Control T, OK, director. And finally, we can rename or create first and then rename the film table. So select a cell, control T, OK, and then we'll call this one film and hit enter. All right, having done that, we can save the workbook and then close that one down. And then back in the Power BI desktop application, we can choose to get data from Excel and then go for file number three. I should have just used recent sources, I suppose. And then I can check each of the five sensibly named tables this time. So we'll ignore all data entirely. And then we can check each of the five boxes. We can click load. And because I've told this particular file to detect relationships automatically, when the five tables are imported, once again, we wonderfully have our five separate tables all related in a sensible fashion by matching on column names. OK, so we've seen a couple of basic things we can do to help model our data after it's been loaded in. But there are some problems you'll need to solve before this stage. And I'm going to show you a quick example of that using another simple file. We move on to file number four, top 10 UK films, single table. Uh, this is a slightly different file. If I double click to open that in Excel, uh, it all looks relatively innocent enough. We've got a basic table uh, with uh, column headings in the first row of the table. We've got the same data type in each column. So rank has numbers, title has text and so on. We are not missing any column headings. We haven't got any blank rows or columns or any extra worksheets. But what we do have and the thing that's going to cause us a problem when we import it is this merged table header right at the very top of the worksheet. Now, there are some very simple and practical things we could do to exclude this. We could just delete the row from the worksheet. First of all, that would make sense and be nice and easy. Or we could create a range name or a table name, which excludes the table header fairly easily enough as well. But just for the purposes of demonstration, I'd like to show you how to solve this problem without any of the quick, simple, practical solutions. We want to have a quick look at how to use the query editor to make changes to the data before it's loaded into the data model. So without making any changes here, I'm going to close down the workbook and then I think I'll create another brand new blank Power BI desktop file for this. So within Power BI desktop, I'm going to press Control and N to start creating a new file. And then when it has finally succeeded in doing that, which always seems to take longer than it should, once it's done that, I'll close down our previous file altogether. We shan't need that one any longer for this video. So let's head back to the previous one and then let's close that one down and we won't bother saving any changes. Then let's just clear the splash screen for our new file and look at how we can import this new set of data. OK, so let's head to get data and then choose Excel. And this time we'll choose file number four, top 10 UK films, single table. And there isn't much to choose from when the navigator does finally appear. There's just a single named worksheet, so we can check that box. And you can hopefully see already that the sort of problems we're going to encounter here. Look, we've got the uh, the merged header sitting at the top as a single column header, then just generically column two, column three, and then the what should be column headers are appearing as the first row of data. I've got a couple of choices for how I can solve this. I, I could first of all choose to load the data into the model and then head back to the edit queries button to make some modifications.
Or what I'm going to do instead is head straight to the Edit Queries option by clicking the Edit button on the Navigator dialog box. Now what this does is it opens up a separate task. You might see that appear on my taskbar. This is the, uh, the separate application, the Power Query Editor. You may be familiar with this as uh, Microsoft Power Query in Excel, if you've used that tool before. Um, so there are several things we can do here to help tidy up our data before it's actually loaded. Now, if you watch the video on creating and publishing your first report, you'll probably already be familiar with the basic operation of the Query Editor tool. But just to very quickly recap, the Query Editor is based on applying a sequence of steps, and the steps always happen in the same sequence. So it's a sort of a almost like a basic flowchart of things that happen to your data before it's actually finally loaded into the data model. So four steps have happened already. The source is where we choose the file we import. Navigation is choosing what item or items from that file we import. Then there's something that's happened automatically here, promoted headers. This is why we're seeing top 10 UK films for past five years as the first column header at the very top of the table. Uh, then there's an option there that says changed type, which is just altered the data types of some columns. You can tell by the icons at the top of each column what data type it contains. Now, the very simplest way we can uh, resolve our problem here to promote our first row of data into column headers and replace the existing ones is simply to click the button that says use first row as headers. And if we do that, you might be able to see that we add another step at the right hand side here, promoted headers one, and another automatic changed type option appears as well. But the important thing is, ignoring the complexity there, the important thing is we've now got rank, title, distributor, revenue, and year as our column headings, which is exactly what we needed. The kind of problem with this is that we've, we've done a few steps sort of unnecessarily. There's a little bit more going on here than we really need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the steps that I've just created myself. So change type one and promoted headers one. And then I'm also going to delete the two steps that happened for us automatically when we first launched the query editor. So the changed type and the promoted headers. So that takes us back to the data at its original stage before anything else happened after selecting that worksheet. What I'd like to do is delete this very first row from our data entirely. We don't need it at all in this model. Now, unlike in Excel, you can't just right click on a, on a row number and choose to delete columns or rows. You can delete rows and columns either by using the, uh, the relevant buttons at the, on the toolbar at the top and the home tab of the ribbon, or you can also use the little drop down arrow in the top left hand corner of the table. I'm going to choose to remove top rows. So if I choose the remove top rows option, I can then say how many rows I want to remove. I'll go with just the one and then click OK. And then I can click the same button I clicked earlier to use first row as headers, which promotes the first row of data into column headers. There's then an automatic changed type option that happens that detects that the years are numbers and the revenue is decimal numbers and distributor and title is text and rank is numbers as well. So at this point, our data is in the correct format or in the correct form. So we can now close and apply all the steps we've chosen and return to the Power BI desktop application. And our data will be loaded into the data model eventually. Getting there, there we are. So we've got our column headings appearing over here and we can check out on the data view that our column headers appear and the data itself appears there as well. So we've done some basic tidying up of our data in the query editor, but there are still a few things you might want to tweak once the data has been loaded into the model. Let's just switch back to the report view and I'm going to add in the revenue field into a new visual. So if I check the revenue box, it will add a basic clustered column chart for me. Then I'd like to break that down by year. So I'd like to see each year as a separate column uh, in the X axis. But if I tick the year box, what happens by default is that Power BI assumes that years should be aggregated. I've, I've summed the years and generated a separate value column for the, uh, for the chart. Now I can easily change that just by moving the year field into the axis box manually to get what I want, but I didn't want to have to do that in the first place. It would be nice if that happened automatically. Now, the reason that year is being aggregated in the first place is simply because of its default aggregation. Power BI has recognized year as a number field, and by default, it will always try to sum number fields. So to modify that, I can highlight the year field either in the report view or in the data view or the model view. It doesn't matter. 
And having selected that, I can head to the Modeling tab in the ribbon. And then I can change its default summarization from Sum to Don't Summarize. Year is more of a category in this example rather than something that should be summed or averaged, etc. So if I start again with a new chart, let me just delete the existing one just to prove that this works properly. Let's add in the revenue field first to get our basic clustered column. Then if I tick the year box this time, rather than going straight into the values box, it goes into the axis box instead. OK, let's look at a file with a slightly more complex arrangement that we can solve using the query editor. If we switch back to the list of files and have a look at file number five, top 10 UK films table with subtotals. If we open that one up, it's essentially the exact same data, but someone this time has helpfully uh, inserted some subheadings and some subtotals into the list. So there are separator rows between each year. So I've got a little subheader for 2018 films and then a 2018 total. And the same pattern repeats for each set of 10 films. Now, again, this is something that's quite awkward to solve. This is something I couldn't really solve just by creating some um, some range names or some table names, or, or at least it would be quite awkward to do and tedious to do individually. But the query editor can solve this sort of problem fairly easily, actually. So let's close that workbook down. And then back in our Power BI report, let's just delete our existing data set. I can right click on that in the report view and choose to delete it. I can choose that I do indeed want to do that. I'll make my uh, visual complaint. So let's just delete that as well by selecting it and hitting the delete key on the keyboard. And then let's look at getting data from a new file by heading back to the home tab, then choosing get data, Excel. And this time we'll pick file number five, films table with subtotals. Let's select the worksheet that we want to import by checking the box next to it. And again, you can see some slightly odd things going on with the column headings, which we, well, at least we know how to sort that part out already. So let's just jump straight into the query editor. Let's not even bother loading this into the model yet. If we jump to the query editor and then let's have a look at what we can do here. Well, first of all, let's reverse, reverse the steps or delete the steps that have been added for us about the changed type and promoted headers. There was no point in doing that in the first place. What I'd like to do is manually delete the top row first of all. So let's use the remove rows button and choose remove top rows. And we'll just go with row number one and then click OK. Then I want the current first row of data to be promoted into the column headers. So let's click the used first row as headers button. So that's just as we did earlier on. There are some uh, some data type changes having have happened already. So that's all fine. But now what we need to be able to do is delete every essentially 12th and 13th row as it stands. I need to look for a pattern in the rows that I can delete so that Power Query can help me with that with deleting them. The problem is I've got one row right at the top that I want to delete and then it's every two rows after every 10 films. And that's not enough of a pattern. So I'm going to delete the top row of data again manually by using the remove rows button. So I can remove rows, remove top rows and then type in the number one and click OK. And then I've got a consistent pattern of after every 10 rows, there are two rows I want to delete, then another 10 rows, two rows to delete, 10 rows, two rows to delete, and so on. So with that pattern, I can click the Remove Rows button and then choose Remove Alternate Rows. Then in the dialog box, I can type in the number of the row that I want to remove first. So currently that's row number 11. So let's go for 11. Then the number of rows I would like to remove from row number 11 is two. And then subsequently, the number of rows I would like to keep after that is 10. So with that pattern specified, if I click OK now, you'll find that all those intermediate subtotals and subheadings have disappeared. And we're just left with the 50 rows of data, the top 10 films from the past five years. So having done that, and we can just quickly check our data types look sensible as well. So we've got one, two, three for the year and 1.2 for the revenue. And uh, we've got ABC123 for the rank. Now that's detecting text and numbers. So let's just change that so that it's set to be a whole number. And then if we close and apply those changes to get back to the report, it will load in that data. And again, we can just quickly check in the data view that the, the data itself looks sensible. 
OK, so that ended up being a fairly simple problem to solve after all with a query editor. Let's move on to the next problem. Let's look at file number six, top 10 UK films, multiple sheets. You can probably predict what's going to happen here. We've got the same data, but this time each year is contained in a separate worksheet. So 10 rows in each with a little subtotal at the bottom and column headings in the top row. What I want to do is use the query editor to take these five sheets and build them into one single list. So there's a couple of techniques I can use to do that. Let's close down the Excel workbook first and then head back to the Power BI report. We can then delete our existing table in the report by right clicking it and choosing to delete it and then confirming that we want to do that. And then let's see, let's head to the model view this time before we start importing data. I'll head to the get data button and choose Excel and we can choose the uh, file number six to open up the navigator. And at this point, all I get chance to do is select each of the five separate worksheets. So let's start by doing that first. Now, of course, if I load those into the model and you have a look at the diagram view, we'll see that we get five completely separate tables, which is not what I want at all. I want those five tables in one single continuous list. And there are two ways we can do that with the query editor. Let's look, first of all, at how we can choose to append queries. So from here, we can head straight back to the Edit Queries button. I'll click the top half of the button just to launch straight into the Query Editor. And I can see my five tables, my five queries listed on the left hand side. What I want to do is create a completely new table out of those five. And I'm going to do that by using the Append Queries button at the right hand side of the, uh, the Home tab of the ribbon. Now I'm going to click the drop down arrow so I get a bit more choice here because I want to build a brand new table out of the five current ones rather than appending some existing tables into one of the existing tables as append queries would do. So let's choose append queries as new. And then when the dialog box appears, it's fairly simple to fill in. It's fairly intuitive. Uh, we've certainly got three or more tables. So let's select that option first. And then I want to select all five tables by selecting the top, holding shift and clicking the last, and then clicking the add button. I've inadvertently added top 10 2014 twice. So let's remove that one that's selected and delete top 10 2014 from the list. Okay, so having done that, I can then click OK. And I get a brand new table with all the data appended into a single list. It's as simple as that. Uh, the table doesn't have a very clever name. So let's change it where it says append one. Let's change its name to say top 10 UK and hit enter to rename it. Then there's a bit of tidying up we need to do, but nothing serious and we know how to do it already. Basically every uh, 11th row needs to be removed from the list. That's where the subtotal is. So we know how to do that with the remove rows, remove alternate rows. When the dialog box appears, the first row to remove is row number 11. The number of rows to remove is one at this time. And then I want to keep the next 10. At that point, I can click OK. Just have a quick check for the data types, uh, whole numbers, decimal numbers, text, text, whole numbers, all looks good. And at this point, I can close and apply this uh, query to the model and I should see my new table gets imported. Now, something annoying happens here as well. You can probably see I perhaps should have disabled my auto detect of relationships. Power Query thinks for some reason I want to join or relate the revenue fields in my two tables, top 10 2014 and the new one I've created. I definitely don't want to do that. So I'm going to right click on the relationship and choose delete to remove it. I can click delete to make that happen. And then there's my complete appended list of data in one single table in the data model. Now, of course, I don't really want my five source tables to be left in the model. If I go back to the report view, I'll see them all listed on the right hand side. And that's a little annoying. I really only want the top 10 UK table. Now, one way I could achieve this is back in the data model view, I can choose to hide each of the individual tables from the report view. So for example, if I right click top 10 2014, I can do this to multiple tables at the time, of course, but this is just for demonstration. I can hide in report view. And then if I go to report view, top 10 2014 doesn't appear. The problem is it still belongs to the model and it's fairly pointless having it in the model. It's not necessary to have the data loaded into the model. All the data I need is in top 10 UK. So what I'm going to do is highlight top 10 2014, hold shift, click top 10 2018, and then right click on one of the selected ones and choose to delete from the model. 
I'll confirm that I want to do that, and then I'm going to get a warning that explains that although I can delete the tables from the model, the queries will still remain. Uh, that's hopefully fairly uh, understandable. I, I can't append five tables into a single one if I've deleted those five tables from the underlying query. If I click OK, I'll see that those tables disappear from the model. But if I go back to my Edit Queries tool, and have a look at the list on the left hand side, I'll see all five original queries are still there. They have to be, otherwise this query couldn't exist. If you're not sure what queries depend on which other queries and you're not sure which you can delete, you can always head to the view menu in or the view tab in the ribbon in the query editor and choose the query dependencies button and that will show you which queries depend on which with this basic flowchart. If I select the top 10 UK query, you see it highlights all of the other tables. So I can't delete anything in this query chain. They all need to be there. So let's just close down that window and, sorry, big pardon, return by going to the Home tab and choosing Close and Apply. And then just to check again, back in the data view, I've got my complete list of all the data from all five sheets. So that's one fairly simple technique to put multiple tables together into one single one. But it did require a little bit of tidying up afterwards and there might be a better solution, one that requires less time at the end to, uh, to tidy things up. So let's delete our top 10 UK table from the model. I can right click on it and choose to delete it. And then I will choose yes, I do want to do that. Then I'm going to head back to the Edit Queries tool and I'm just going to tidy up the remaining queries. So I can highlight the five source queries, right click and delete those as well and choose Delete and then close and apply to get back to essentially an empty report. Okay, at this point now, I'm going to choose to get data again from Excel. And I'm going to go back to file number six, top 10 UK films, multiple sheets. And then this is very much not intuitive. Uh, you would not know this option was here unless uh, someone had shown it to you, as in my case, or, or you looked it up and found it via uh, Google, for instance. But rather than selecting one of the worksheets in the Excel workbook, rather than having to be forced to select an item in there, if you just want to get access to the entire contents of the workbook, you can just right click on the folder at the top and immediately choose Edit which will take you straight to the query editor, but looking at the, the raw source for this Excel workbook. Okay, so what you should be able to see here is a, a set of five rows, one corresponding to each worksheet, and then a column called data. If I just, without clicking on the, the highlight there, you, uh, the actual uh, the hyperlink, if I click into the cell, I'll get a little preview at the bottom of the window that shows me what data is contained in there. So you can see that the data is, is available. Uh, if I clicked on the hyperlink, by the way, it actually adds a step and it seems that I want to expand and select just that single table. So that's kind of effectively what happens when you choose a worksheet to import. I definitely did not want to do that. So I'm going to undo the three steps that have been created for me to get back to this stage. If I choose apply changes, I'm not quite sure what happened there. It's taking me back to the wrong place. There we go. So. Um, what I want to do now is I want to concentrate on just the data column. It's the only one that I'm actually interested in. The other four aren't necessary at all. So what I'm going to do is right click the data column and choose remove other columns. So I'm just left with a column that contains all the raw data. What I'd like to do now is expand all five sheets rather than just one single one. And to do that, I can click the little double headed arrow at the top of the data column. So when I do that, I then get to choose which of the five columns from each sheet I want to use. Well, I want all five of them. I don't want to prefix each column name with the name of the underlying table. So let's uncheck that box to make sure we get just a simple column name and then click OK. And there we go. Our entire list of worksheets appended in one single continuous list, effectively in one step using one single query. What we need to do now is a bit of tidying up, of course. So we've got to promote the first row of data into column headers. That's nice and easy to do. We've done that many times already. Then we have, let's see, we've got two rows. We've got the uh, the footer row, the, the sort of subtotal row, and then the header row for the next table. So I've got another pattern of rows to delete. Let's use remove rows, remove alternate rows. Again, getting very used to doing this by now. The first row to remove is row number 11. The number of rows to remove is two and the number of rows to keep will 
as ever be 10. We can then click OK to get our continuous list. The data types haven't been changed for us automatically. We have had one changed type step, uh, but that looked like it just changed. Uh, what did it change? It looked like it might have changed. Well, nothing much at all. Oh, there we go. The, the text for the title and distributor columns. We should change the year to a number, a whole number, revenue to a decimal number, and then rank also to a whole number. All right, so having done that, we can click close and apply, and then we'll end up back in our data view of our workbook, of our, sorry, of our Power BI report. And we should be, if I select the table, should be able to see all the data that we've imported in just the same way we have previously. We should be able to just give this a, a quick tidy up as well. Let's just change the uh, the column, sorry, the table name. Let's call it Top 10 UK. So the table's got a sensible name. So there we go. A uh, minimum of effort in terms of tidying up. Just a little bit trickier to, to build the query in the first place. OK, so there's just one last technique I'd like to show you for the query editor for this video. Um, we're kind of going to come around full circle to create what we essentially already have in our first file, Movies Single Table. It's basically a flat single worksheet with all the data in one single table. But I'd like to use the query editor to build that out of the Movies Related Sheets workbook. So what we'll do is uh, let's have a look at the data view. I'm going to keep my top 10 UK table in there for now. It, it's doing no harm sat there. So what I'm going to do then is choose to get some more data. So I'm going to get data from Excel and I'll go to number two, movies related sheets. Now I'm going to start by selecting all five of the sheets and then I'm immediately going to click the edit button rather than load to launch the query editor. And then what I'm going to do, making sure I'm in the film table, what I'd like to be able to do, although the film table currently contains the director ID and the director's name is sitting over here in the director table, I would like to bring the director's name into this table so that my end user essentially only has one table to work with. We'll do the same for certificate and country and genre uh, eventually. Uh, so the end result will be one single table imported into the data model. Let's do this by merging queries. We can choose either merge queries or click the drop down arrow at the right hand side to choose merge queries as new. In this example, what I'm going to do is merge data into the film table. So with the film table selected, I'm going to choose merge queries. And then when the dialog box appears, I've got my film table selected at the top. At the bottom, I'm going to select the director table. And then I have to select in the two different tables which columns contain the matching information. So as we've already described, we've got the director ID column in the film table and director ID in the director table. The join type, this will be familiar to you if you're comfortable with joins in queries in, for instance, SQL or in Microsoft Access's version of SQL. We're going to go with what's called a left outer join, which takes all the rows from the first table. So we'll get all 1200 films and any matching values from the second. So it tells us that this, currently the selection matches 1200 of 1200 rows from the first table. At that point, I'm going to click OK. And that will bring in a table field, just in the same way we've seen the table option in um, uh, the, the previous example where we were appending queries or, or extracting everything from the Excel workbook. Again, I can select the, the cell containing the table to show me the data that it contains. Here, all I'd like to really do is extract the full name. So I'd like to expand the full name into a separate column in the film table. So let's click the double arrows at the top of the director column to do that and we will choose to select just the full name. And I do not want to use the original column name as a prefix, so let's uncheck that and then click OK. And there we go, we get that data table converted into the director names. From this point, it's just a case of repeating that to bring in the other tables. So let's use Merge Queries again. I'll use the Merge Queries option with the film table selected. I'll go from the top of the list this time. Let's choose Certificate and we have the certificate ID in the film table, certificate ID in the certificate table with a left outer join matching 1200 rows. Click OK. I can then click the double arrow at the top, uncheck certificate ID and then click OK to convert that into the certificate. 
there's a mix of numbers and text here. So some certificates look like numbers and are treated as such. Really though, these are categories, these are bits of text. So let's change the data type here from uh, general to text. Then we can do the same thing in the merge queries tool to bring in, let's just go quickly now, let's have the, we've got the certificate, let's get the country and we can go with country ID and country ID, left out to join, 1200 rows, okay. And then we can expand that and select just the country field and hit okay. And then one last one, merge queries. We will select the genre ID, we will choose the genre table, we'll choose the genre ID field in there, left out to join, 1200 rows, okay. And then we can expand the genre table, uncheck the genre ID, include the genre, and then click OK. A little renaming, let's change the names of this. Uh, we've got genre.1, which I don't want, let's call that genre. Country1, let's call that country. And certificate1, let's call that certificate. We also can now get rid of the ID fields. We don't need those in the film table anymore. So let's scroll along to the left hand side. Let's highlight direct ID hold control, country ID, genre ID, and certificate ID, and then right click, and then choose to delete those columns or remove columns, I should say. A little more to do with data types, numeric types, uh, sorry, uh, I say numeric types. Some of the films in the list are, are, are just numbers of so the film 300, consists of just numbers, so it detects the data type of title as general. So let's set that to text, so we know that what we're talking about is always text, even if it looks like a number. Everything else looks okay to me at this point. So at this stage, let's choose to close and apply. Just before I do that, beg your pardon, if I head to the view tab and look at query dependencies, once again, you can hopefully see here, if I select the film table, it is dependent on certificate, country, director, and genre. So I can't not query those tables, but I will be able to delete them from the model in a moment. So I can close down that window and then head to the home tab, close and apply the query editor. And I should see my new tables appearing eventually. And there we go. So somewhere over here to the right hand side, apparently. Some relationships have been created, uh, but because I've deleted the ID fields from the film table, you'll see that the fields related now are the text field genre to genre and certificate to certificate, country to country. The direct table does not have a matching field name. Oh, it does actually, it's got full name, but for some reason that isn't joined. It doesn't matter because we're going to just delete these from the uh, from the model anyway. So we can highlight director uh, or, or select director, hold down control, select the other tables, and then finally right click on one of the selected tables and choose delete from model, choose delete, confirm that we want to do that and accept that they will be left in the underlying query. But we now have just a single film table with all of the data contained as though it was just a single flat file. Okay, well that covers all the techniques I wanted to talk about in terms of getting data from Excel for this video. Uh, at this point, you might want to maybe stick around and play around with the data, maybe create some visuals. It kind of seems silly going to all this effort to get the data without actually visualizing it. So plenty of scope for playing around with that now. Um, otherwise, hope you found some of the techniques there useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.